All right, here we go. Toast up. Toast. Good morning, EJ. Toast to the morning word crowd. God bless you and God bless America. The sound of music, Psalm 118. He's working on getting up. Tell him I said, get out of that stinking rack and put his feet on the ground, Ashton. All right, here we go. Psalm 118. This is a psalm, anonymous psalm, psalm by someone who had been in distress and who, who had cried out to the Lord. God had moved on their behalf, delivered them, and then they wrote a song, which is what a psalm is. It's, a, it's praise and worship set to a tune, all right? So we're just going to go over a few verses this morning. Verse 5 and 6, um, 7 and 8. Um, and then we'll skip over. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a set me in a broad place, meaning that he brought me out, delivered me. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. Now notice, he says in verse six, that the Lord is on my side. I called out of my distress. He answered me and set me in a broad place. He says, the Lord is on my side. Now that's important for us to know today, uh, that God is for you. That's not, a, that's not just an Old Testament thing. That's a New Testament thing as well. God is for you, all right? Now we're always saying, you know, that we're on the Lord's side, and we are. Uh, we serve the Lord, um, and all praise and honor and glory be to Him. But at the same time, one of the reasons that we praise Him is that He's on our side, meaning that God's interest, uh, God is interested in us, God loves us. As we had a time of praise and worship last night, you know, and Chuck made a, a point um, our youth minister at the end, and he says, if it matters to you, it matters to God because God cares about you. God loves you. So if it's big to you, it's big to God. And if it's little to you, it's probably little to God too. Uh, but God is for us, and we need to know that, especially in this day and time when people are defecting from the faith and life is chaotic and falling apart at the seams. It looks like we're living in a country that's literally crumbling in on itself. And I don't say that that's not hyperbole. That's, that is reality uh, in real time that we're living in a crumbling nation. Uh, but it's important that you understand that God, for the righteous people, for those that love him and who are called, the called according to his purpose, God is for them. God is for them. God is on your side. This is not WBRC6 News on your side. This is God on your side. So we need to we need to remember that because oftentimes we think that we are in a place where no one cares, no one knows, and no one's on our side. That's wrong, wrong, and wrong. God is on your side. God knows and God cares. Look at this other point too. It says, the Lord is for me <clears throat> among those who help me. Did you know when people come alongside you and help you in any shape, form, or fashion that that's God moving with them? That that's God behind the scenes? That that's God... Uh, um, in, when people uh, in your family, your friendship, your work group, your peers or whatever, when they step up and they begin to minister to you, love on you and encourage you, even your lost friends, did you know that God's behind that? That God is amongst those that help you. God is sending rescuers to you. God is sending help to you, encouragement to you. And so sometimes we think, you know, God, I need you to help me. It's kind of like the, you know, the, the old joke, you know, about the, the flood and the guy got on top of his house and he was uh, waiting on God to deliver him and a boat came by and another boat came by and then a helicopter came by and they said, can we help you? No, I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, he drowned. He meets the Lord in heaven and, and he said, Lord, I was waiting on you. I was exercising my faith. And he said, well, I sent you three rides and you turned them all down. God is among us. God is moving among us that help us. So, don't don't be so supernatural that you miss the the uh, the the obvious, and that is is that when people hug on you, encourage you, high five you, text you, uh, send you an encouraging video, tell you that they're praying for you, 
that that's God in the midst, right? That's God moving on your behalf. And likewise, when we do that for others, that's God, we're in partnership with God, ministering, edifying, building up one another and the body of Christ. <clears throat> now he goes on, he says, it is better to trust in the Lord than man. And that's what the psalmist is writing. He said, my trust was in the Lord. God sent me people and he was in the midst of them, but my trust is in the Lord because people can and will let you down. Always trust in the Lord more than any other thing, more than your political affiliation, more than your money, more than your business, more than your own intellect, more than your own strength, your bodily strength, more than your personal connections. Trust in the Lord. Now he can move in and through all of those, but have your confidence not in those things, but in God himself who can use those things. Now, here we go. <clears throat> we go over to verse 14 and 15, last two verses. The Lord is my strength and song. The Lord is. <clears throat> Excuse me. God doesn't, we say sometimes, you know, Lord strengthen them. Well, God does strengthen us, but the strength that he sends or the strength that we receive is the him, him, Self, God himself is our strength. God doesn't have a strength or a power that is outside of himself. He is power. He is strength. And it says that he is our song. The, the psalmist said he's not only my strength, but he's my song and has become my salvation. Now, salvation, we think in terms of salvation from sin, salvation from hell, salvation from death, and all of those are true. But in context here, what he's saying is, is that he has become my deliverance. He has become my welfare. I cried out to God, he answered me. He is the one who showed up. He is the one who set me free. He is the one who arranged my deliverance. He is the one who spared my life. It was him. And so he said, in that manner, he has become my song. In other words, Praise be unto God, that through friends, that through acquaintances, that through the church. He himself has moved on my behalf and he is the one who deserves all the praise and glory. He is my song. Now go down to verse five. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. Now, uh, the psalm, the, the, the scriptures always are contrasting the tents of the righteous with the, <clears throat> with the palaces or the houses of the wealthy and the wicked. And uh, I think the psalmist David said, I'd rather dwell in the tents of the servants of God than in the uh, palace of the king. I would rather be in, 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 a, in a lesser place with God than a greater place without God. And so, it says the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. In other words, um, oh, let me back up. So it's not only the dwelling place, okay? Not only the dwelling place, the dwelling place of the righteous for the fuller families right here. It's the tent of the righteous right here. But also the Bible says that this body is a tent and that God has reserved for me a building in heaven, an, a permanent new body. So while, it says while we are in this tent, Okay, it's, it's a temporary place, but it's my body, it's my tent. So in the tent of the righteous, both where I live and in my own person, there should be a song that goes forth. There should be an ever-present song going forth of praise, of worship, ongoing. Um, and I think it's important that when we look at this verse, it says the voice of rejoicing. That, that is someone singing praises to God. The voice of rejoicing and salvation, meaning, meaning the songs of deliverance and the great things that God has done for us should be in the tents of the righteous. Now that's twofold. Let me, let me put it this way. There should be some worship going on in your house. And there should be some worship going on in you, wherever you are. It's important that we maintain an environment of praise. Why? Because the world that we live in as Chris Miller says about Mary Beth, when they, when they go to Disney, he said, Mary, he said, Mary Beth can suck the fun out of Disney. All right. He said, Mary Beth can suck the fun out of anything. 
uh, and, and and he was being facetious, but, uh, but a little bit true. He said, she can just suck the fun out of anything. Well, we live in a world that can just suck the fun, the suck the joy out of anything. And so it's important that we keep our minds uh, in an environment of praise and worship, that we keep our minds, the scripture tells us, set our mind on heavenly things. Well, when we start thinking about the goodness of God, when we start thinking about the mercy of God over here, it says his mercy endures forever. That's the loving kindness of God towards us. When we think about that, it should produce a song in us. We should get happy. We should, the joy of the Lord should should bubble up in us and we should have a song on our lips, a song in our heart, a song in our car, a song in our house. We need to continually keep ourselves in a... Um, in an environment of praise and worship to keep us oriented, kind of like a compass. You know, in this world, at any given, on any given day and in any given moment, based on what's going on, we can lose our direction. And just like a compass in the woods, every so often, you just got to stop and orient yourself to the north, orient that compass to the north so you can determine the direction that you need to be going in. Because as you know, in the woods, uh, you don't have to go but 25 or 30 yards or 50 yards if it's really thick and everything looks the same and you can j- just that quickly, you can get off path. And so a song, setting our mind on the things of God, the scriptures, and looking back at the past deliverances and the goodness of God with regards to our salvation and our, our uh, permanently and our timely deliverance and God's blessings in our life, it's important that we keep those fresh on our mind and around us and praise God so that we can kind of keep keep our spiritual bearing. And a song helps us do that. <clears throat> and if you don't think that music has a powerful effect, think about the songs that you find yourself singing uh, or humming or thinking back to, or think of, uh, from time to time just whistling and somebody will say, what are you whistling? Man, I, I didn't even realize I was singing, whistling that song or singing that song. Secondly, in other words, so songs come back to you probably more quickly than scripture does. Number two, think about this. How many times have you just been riding down the road and heard a song and immediately with that song thought of a certain place or event where you were, where that, where that music was played one time? You know, I was at the beach. I was at Bonnie and Clyde's. I was at the Cowboy. Those of y'all that used to run with me, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, I was, uh, we were at a football game. We were tailgating. You know, we were, it was a pasture party. Um, we were driving to the beach. Certain songs, you start correlating songs with events and events with songs. And it draws your mind to the event. And it drives your, draws your mind to a time. So <clears throat> likewise, we should uh, allow the songs of the Lord, the, we should be singing about the events of God in our life and the goodness of God in our life to keep us oriented to times and places and things that God has done for us. That's why he says, when he starts off the psalm over here, he said his mercy endures forever. So what he, he, he has had a particular encounter with the goodness and the mercy and the loving kindness of God. God has answered his prayer. God has literally spared his life over here. He said, the Lord has saved me. I was not destroyed. God has saved him literally, not just from sin, but from death itself. And, and the psalmist just begins to sing to the Lord. That's what this, and then he starts pinning his song. And I can just see him when he, when he goes out in the field and he's working his oxen and he says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. That is the lyrics to his song. And he's singing it. He put his song down. That's what this psalm is. It is his spiritual song of deliverance and worship to the Lord that we are now reading. And he said, we should likewise have the same song in our tent, in our house. We need to put some worship music on in our house so that our kids hear it, so that we hear it, so that while Micah can't find his football helmet and Elena can't find her backpack and Beth is fussing to me about the garbage needs to go to the road and I'm fussing because nobody's getting in the car and we're running late and I got an eight o'clock meeting, we need to, we need to keep oriented, Amen. We need a little we need a little praise Jesus going on around here because very quickly all four of us can go in four different directions and it's not good. 
And next thing you know, we can be having a loud understanding between all of us. Somebody's going to be getting their fanny whip. Somebody's going to be locked out of the car. Somebody's going to be getting a fussing. Next thing you know, I'm going to come home. Beth's going to give me a two-day silent treatment. Elena's going to look like the hogs ate her grandmama. She's going to be all sold up. And Micah, he just, he, just, he just floats. He just rolls with the punches. But the point is, is that we need, to, we need something going on in our house. You know, we need pictures. Bible verses. You know, we have one right over there in our window. I'm looking at it right now. It says, as far as everyone else knows, we are a normal family. <laughs> okay, so, but right beside it is one that says love. So we need things like this, and particularly a song that orients us back to our spiritual north. And secondly, that other people hear it. It says, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. Well, you know what? People that walk by your tent ought to hear your song. People that come in your house ought to hear your song. People that work with you every day ought to hear your song. Not that you are absolutely just singing out loud all day long, but that they can see that you have a song in your heart, that, that, that something's going on inside your heart and your mind that they're not catching on to. I mean, they're catching on to it, but they don't know what it is. And they're going, man, what is it? And said, man, man, God's been good to me. And you just start singing your song to them. Not in necessarily with a tune, but I'm talking about you just begin to witness to them about what God's done for you. It doesn't have to be set to music, but there should be some music in our life. There should be, because I, I, I don't have proof for this. I don't have proof for this, but we know that, that, that Satan, before he fell, was Lucifer, the, the, uh, the worship cherub, the praise and worship leader in heaven. Now, I had a cousin, he's passed away now. He was a music major. And, uh, and he said to me one time, he said, I think that the original language was music. Because when you get to heaven, everybody's singing. All right? And he said, I just believe that the original music was singing and that language, our language that we had uh, came out of that. They just took the notes away and the words just kept going. Now, I can't prove that. And that's a supposition, uh, but it makes it makes some sense to me. And uh, so uh, I think that we need to really not not. I don't think we, we can overemphasize the importance of of music and the right music in our lives, in our homes, in our hearts, in our mouths, in our cars, and so forth and so on. Uh, this just came to my mind. Last night, we, um, we came home, Rhett and Ann, uh, Ann Randall came home with us, and we all sat down and had a little cup of ice cream. And uh, Ann Randall wasn't going to rest till everybody had ice cream. So we sat around, we had ice cream, we talked. So I get up and I throw my stuff away. Micah has already migrated into the living room and he's turned the TV on and he had it on YouTube looking at some kind of stupid uh, videos that he watches. Not stu They're stupid to me. They're not stupid to him. Well, he was cranking it back up because <clears throat> he had it on pause when we left home. And, uh, and I look as I'm going past the living room and I see ACDC. And I said, hey man. I said, what are you doing? He said, we're watching videos. I said, what are you getting ready to listen to? He said, ACDC. I said, no, I don't think we're listening to ACDC. He said, Papa, it's uh, Thunderstruck, which is what they play before the Alabama football game. You've been Thunderstruck. I mean, and it's a, you know, it's all right. So, well, Thunderstruck is okay. I don't have a problem really with Thunderstruck, but my point is, is that I, I said, turn it off, son. Why, Papa, it's Thunderstruck. I said, we don't listen to ACDC. Well, the truth is we do listen to ACDC at the ball games and the half times and so forth and so on. But my point, my point is this. I want my son to be looking for songs besides ACDC because they, they have a song called Highway to Hell, among many others, that I just prefer him not learn the words to. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't think that music has a powerful attraction, you just go watch your 10-year-old and listen to your 10-year-olds. Listen to what they, when they put those things in their ears and they got that little thing in their hand and you can't hear what they hear, you better be peeking into it. They'll be listening to Thunderstruck and the next thing you know, they'll be listening to P. Diddy and, and all those other people on there, Eminem and um, it's got, they, they got lyrics in there to make a, a sailor blush. 
But I said all that to say that it's powerful. It's powerful and, and, and it's purposeful. And we need to have a song in our home and a song in our car and a song in our mind and a song in our heart at all times, reorienting us back to the mercies and the goodness of God. Hey, listen, if you're going to say something, might as well say something to God and put a little tune with it. Amen. Now, listen, guys, I'm heading out to Montana tomorrow. I don't know where I'm going to be going. I'm, I'm going to be in Wyoming initially for a couple of days. Uh, the 7th of September is my 37th. Boy, I got that number right. Our 37th anniversary. So we're going to take about two days to sashay through Wyoming, and I'm going to just go back in my mind to my cowboy days that never existed. Maybe God will give me a cowboy hat and a pony in heaven. And we're going to make our way up to uh, Montana, and we're going to do some mission work. So I don't know if we're going to have good reception, but I'll try to give you guys a a little shout out here and there with some short videos uh, along the way. Not necessarily a morning word, but just something to let you know where we are and that we're having a good time, and I want to sing about it. Hope you guys have a great time. I will be out of pocket for the next nine to ten days. It won't be this Monday, but Monday week we'll be back in the saddle. Good Lord willing, and the saints don't rise. Peace out. Y'all pray for us. Keep us safe, not just me, but our team. Jesus is Lord. Let's sing about it.